Hey everyone, welcome back again at Reviews. One of the first boats I featured on this channel and one of the first boats I worked with Mark Ziegler Yacht Sales on was a Saline 43. That video has since got over 150,000 views and continues to get attention. So when Mark reached out and said he now had a Saline 47 for sale, I jumped at the opportunity to take a look at this one. At the time of shooting the video, this one was for sale in Jacksonville, Florida. She's up for sale for $399,950. And this is a year 2000 model, and she's actually hull number 2. This is an extremely capable raised pilot house trawler. She's got a range somewhere in the region of 2000 nautical miles, around about 90 10 knots cruising speed. She's single diesel with bow thruster, and she's also got stabilizers. For serious offshore cruising, I love that high bow, I love the high freeboard, and I love how high and far back the front windows are at the helm, that way it keeps it extra safe and secure from any waves that's coming over the deck. And despite having such a high freeboard, boarding couldn't be easier, there's a little door access here and there's one on the other side as well. And I like the fact that these doors and the transom door will show you in a few minutes. I like the fact that these can all lock into position, either in the open or closed position. And as I make my way up to the bow, I like how safe and secure you feel when you walk along here. You've got the overhead hang from the fly bridge, you get that raised bulwark on the side, and then when you get further up forward, you get that solid hand hold. I also like that there's door access on both the port and starboard side to the helm. This one does have a fly bridge, but it doesn't feel like it's a urgent necessity when it comes to close quarter manoeuvring when you get such easy deck access. And one common theme you're going to find throughout this boat inside and out is just how much storage there is available. As a long range extended cruiser this is meant for liveaboard use and as always storage is a premium. But very few boats of this size can offer as much storage as this one does. In the lazarette I'll show you in a few minutes there's actually Fold and removable chairs that you could bring up to the bow, you could use in the aft cockpit or you could use in the flybridge. There's plenty of space here for sitting out if you wanted to enjoy the sunset or the sunrise. Now this has got two anchors and two anchor lockers and you can see just how deep those anchor lockers are. The anchor on the left hand side is purely rope and the anchor on the right hand side is using chain. The windlass can be operated here on the bow but it can also be operated at both the lower helm and the flybridge. And on the bow we also have a Samson post. This one is capable of doing a great loop and if you were to go through the lock gates you're going to find full advantage of that Samson post where it's easier to adjust the ropes as the tide goes up and down through the lock gates. In a lot of ways this boat reminds me of the commercial boats I used to work on and help sell when I was back in Scotland and I mean that in a complimentary way. This isn't a dockside queen, this is one that is designed for all weathers and for being able to handle the offshore conditions and conditions can turn unfavourable at a moment's notice. And I like the fact that on the overhang from the flybridge, I like the fact that it's got lights recessed into it. If you were to walk along here at night, and be well illuminated, and that includes for that access point on both the port and starboard side. And then that takes us round to the aft cockpit. I love how much space is here. This would be a great opportunity to do a bit of fishing from. You see they even have rod holders built into the framework. If you want to do some swimming and diving. I like the fact that you got a hot and cold shower here on the aft deck as well. And you can rinse off before going inside. And notice how substantial and solid both the hull is, but also all the fair leads and cleats and fixtures and fittings. It's definitely designed for heavy duty use. And one design element that Saline's famous for is it's got a retractable bathing platform. In today's conditions it's not that big of a deal, but if you had a heavy following sea, you can pull this up and you can keep it tied up against the hull, and that way you don't need to worry about the waves and the water slamming against it. Again you get more of that overhang, but I like the fact that this one's got flybridge access, you can also access it from the helm, which is far easier, but you do have that access back here. The aft cockpit's also got a large lazarette for storage, but also so that you can access the steering gear as well. And as we step inside, you soon realise she's got that rugged exterior, but she's certainly finished to a yacht standard in the inside. You've got like an all-in-one area here, where you've got the galley and the saloon. I love how much headroom you have, I love the bright colours we've got. There's plenty of natural light from all the windows. Plenty of ventilation too, most of these windows do open, as well as having that aft door. There's a ton of storage options, including underneath all the soft furnishings you see here. But I do like the fact that if I pan up overhead, 
Not only does this have recessed lighting, I love the fact it's got a solid handhold that runs down the length of the saloon. If this was in a rolling and pitching sea, there's always something to hold on to and grab. I also like the way that all the materials seem to complement each other. And as much as this is a large boat, I can't help but feel like it feels like a much larger boat than it actually is. Eliminating that claustrophobic feeling that some people might have on board. I also like this little desk area that we've got in the starboard quarter. If this was my boat, you'd spot me here on my laptop, uploading a whole bunch of photographs and videos to social media. And we do have several televisions throughout this boat, but the boat itself is actually equipped with KVH Satellite TV. So you do have that entertainment option, especially when you're at anchor. And if we make our way around, this will lead you into the galley. And if you're looking at doing extended cruising and liveaboard use, I always think a galley is important to be well equipped. And this one certainly doesn't disappoint. you got near full height fridge freezer. you got great countertop space for also preparing meals. you got a ton of storage space. You can see you've got different cabinets and drawers. you got your toaster oven. you got your coffee maker. you got a Force 10 3 burner propane stove with oven. And I was told that this one's actually never been used. It certainly doesn't look like it's been used to cook every meal for the past 20 years. But on top of the fridge freezer, there's a little cabinet in here, and this also has your conventional microwave oven. So you get plenty of options for either preparing snacks or your favourite meal. And if I clear off the countertop space, you'll see here in the corner, this has also got an in-counter ice box. Again, just that way you can keep extra goods on board without having to run to the nearest marina. And then without opening every door and drawer here, I just wanted to highlight just how well the storage was. I also like the fact that throughout the entire boat, it's got the push button for locking and securing all the drawers and cabinets in place. So again, that way if you're on a heavy sea, nothing should open and everything should stay safe and secure. And another design feature I like with this one is the entire floor of the saloon and galley. It's pretty much made up of hatch covers and underneath here is where you'll find the engine compartment. There is better engine access for your day-to-day -day maintenance, but if you had larger projects, you get plenty of room in here as well as extra light and ability to stand up, etc. So we make our way up to the wheelhouse. I've got an ice maker at the top of the steps. And I just love the layout of this one. I love those big windows. I love how much space you have if you wanted to ever add more electronic equipment. You get a great big bench seat here for your friends and family to join you on, but you also have a watch berth behind there. So whether you're doing passage making and you want to have somebody staying up close, or if you want to be an anchor and you're worried about the anchor slipping, you got that option. So to begin with, I was impressed with the switch panels that we've got here. This is all illuminated as soon as you open a door. It's clearly labelled. And that's for both your AC and DC. 12 volt and 120 volt connections. We've got some handheld devices and charging stations. You've got the bilge pump station with alarms built in. You've got your ICOM VHF radio. You've got Raytheon Autopilot as well as the Raytheon Speed Log and Depth. This one's equipped with NIAID stabilizers, and it's got your control panel here. You get a 16 inch Furuno touchscreen GPS plotter multifunction display. You got a Ray Marine, this is a 72 nautical mile color radar. Controls for the windlass, the bow thruster, the searchlights, dual lever Morse controls. Now, I'm not sure if you can make it out on the video, but this one does have a generator, and it's got just under 1500 hours on the clock. Then we also have more up overhead. We've got the engine controls up here. And this has got the Cummins Marine engine. It's a 280 horse inline six cylinder. And she's got roughly 1900 hours on the clock. I also like the fact you've got an overhead hatch. That way you get extra light and ventilation should you need it. And if you're worried about the visibility out the window, remember all the window covers were still on whenever we walked around the boat. But those are easily removable. And you can see we do have the access to both the port and starboard deck. And as with the rest of the boat, there's a ton of storage up here. There's large storage drawers underneath that bench seat. It'd be ideal for all your charts and navigation. Documentation, almanacs, things like that. A few short steps lead out to the flybridge. I love how much space is out here, including having the tender stored up here with that mast that's got the capability of launch and retrieval. According to Saline's website, the 47 has got a bridge clearance of approximately 14 feet with the mast down, so this is capable of doing the great loop. And from up here, you do have most of the navigation and instrumentation repeated. You've got a North Star 6000 colour GPS, 
you got the engine instrumentation, speed log depth, autopilot, compass, controls for the windlass and spotlight. And again, you'll find solid handholds up here, as well as different storage compartments. Perhaps for handheld devices, or again for more paper charts. And this has got an electric winch for doing a launch and retrieval of that new dinghy. This is a rigid inflatable boat with an outboard. And I like how much canopy covers and protection has been put into place, keeping everything safe and secure and out of the elements. And we do have that large bimini cover over the top of the helm keeping you protected from the sun and the rain. This really is a very great and capable cruiser, whether you wanted to cruise from up here on the flybridge or cruise from downstairs in the lower helm. Now if we make our way back down, I can show you the lower accommodation. You access this from a companionway in the port hand side, just next to the saloon and galley. At the bottom of the stairs you'll find a combination washer and dryer. Again, even on the companionway you're going to find a whole series of storage cabinets. And then at the bottom of the steps, we also have walk-in engine room access. I'll show you the engine in more detail in a few minutes. But note also all the soundproofing material that's here. I bet you hardly hear that engine running. Next up is the guest heads compartment. You've got the toilet in here, but you also have the full shower unit. You've got the sink, and you get plenty of storage for your toiletries and personal belongings. Again, even in here, you get plenty of headroom. Plenty of natural light and ventilation, as well as artificial light, of course. Opposite is where you'll find a guest cabin, and here you've got pretty much bunk beds. And I like the fact that there's as much storage in here for a guest cabin. You don't always have that. Those are extremely soft mattresses as well. I don't know if those are memory foam or not, but they are very comfortable. And I like the fact that the hanging locker space has got the kind of louvre effect. That way you get air and ventilation. You don't have to worry about that damp smelling that you sometimes have on boats. Storage overhead, again it's got that push button lock and you can also see we've got opening portholes if you wanted extra light and ventilation in here. And then if we make our way forward, that's where you're going to find the owner's VIP stateroom. And I challenge you to find a boat under 50 foot that's got an owner's cabin as big as this one with as much headroom. To begin with we've got a little desk area, but this is also meant to be a vanity station. And I like the fact if you pop open this mirror you get a whole bunch of storage, but it's all compartments. So things don't all get mixed up. Again, notice how a lot of the storage compartments have got that louver effect for the ventilation. You get opening hatches on both sides of the hull, as well as overhead. And then this has got a massive V-berth, and you see it's got the infill cushions in place. But with that infill cushion, this is one of the biggest beds I've seen on a boat of this size. I love all the woodwork that's in here. Not only does it appear to be in good condition, but it also really helps give that nautical feel to it. Boats are meant to look like boats. You even have like a little shelf or ledge built into it. I can see me throwing a cell phone or a tablet up there whenever I'm laying in bed. And then even more storage on the starboard side, as well as another little ledge area. Which you can easily put a hold all on while you're packing and unpacking. And then as this is the owner's stateroom, it is of course en suite. What you might not expect is this one's actually got a bath as well as having a shower. And of course you've still got your toilet and your sink, and storage for your personal belongings. And a combination of natural light and ventilation, and plenty of recessed artificial light as well. And if we make our way back down the corridor, I'll take you back to the engine room access. As I said, there is access through the main saloon and galley, but this is far easier to get into. I love how much soundproofing we have, I love how much light is down here. And in general, I was impressed with the layout. Everything's clearly labelled, everything's clearly accessible. And if you've been following many of my videos, you'll hear me saying the easier it is to service an engine and generator, the more likelihood the engine has been serviced. There's no excuses with this one, and this one has been well maintained. And that generator you see, that's a 12 kilowatt generator. As I mentioned earlier, it's got just under 1500 hours on the clock. The engines is a Cummins 6BTA 5.9. This is an inline six cylinder 280 horse diesel engine. It's fresh water cooled. And it's got around 1900 hours on the clock. And you can see you get easy access to all your filters, your fuel and water separators. And I like the fact that there's sight gauges on both the water and fuel tanks. You've also got cruise air air conditioning, but we have got two zones. You've got a 16,000 BTU and a 36,000 BTU. You get access for servicing and maintaining the stabilizers. And this even has an engine block heater for those cold winter cruises. 
And as a safety precaution, the entire engine room has got Fireboy automatic fire suppression system, and that does come with a manual override. I fell in love with Mark Saline 43 when I first filmed it, just over two years ago, and this one just takes that to the next level. I'd like to thank Mark for the opportunity to come on board and take a look at it and share the video with you. I'll share a link to Mark's website in the description. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments. If you can leave a comment down below. If you haven't done so already, if you can hit that like and subscribe button, it really does make a difference. And I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks everyone.